Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Wednesday, December 15th, 2021. Well, the wait is over. We've been wondering what the FOMC is going to do, and we're going to find out this afternoon. What does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, buckle up, let's get ready for the hump day edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts. Now, I know when I was talking about these things the other day, no one really wanted to hear that uh, possibility that we could run into some trouble. One of the things that we have to do is we have to look at the chart and see all the possibilities available. And I mentioned in here that it, it, although we broke out, we needed to prove that we could hold that area as support. Unfortunately, we did not do that and we kind of drifted into the gap here um, yesterday with a little bit of selling. The bulls tried to convince us that, hey, inflation doesn't matter, but by the end of the day, well, maybe it does just a little bit. And we have some uncertain um, uh, things coming at us here this morning. We'll talk about those in just a moment. But let's kind of keep in mind that where we sit right here, we're trying to cling to this support. We've got our fingernails dug into that rock face and we're holding on with all we can do in that, um, in that little support area in the chart. But it really wouldn't be all that hard if we were to for us to see that possibility that we could slip into this gap and trade down into this area. Now, at the same time, it's not all that hard to believe that we could hold this area in here and just continue that consolidating move through um, through the chart right here as we try to rest and uh, spill off a little bit of the volatility. Unfortunately, these price moves are pretty darn big and that's making it very, very challenging for traders. I know some of you guys on YouTube don't knew the, know this, but I do an awful lot of individual private coaching with uh, traders. And there's a lot of folks right now that have been suffering heavily in the market. As a matter of fact, giving up most of their gains this year in this chop and whip. Remember guys, when you don't have an edge, if you've been losing consistently, the market is trying to tell you something here. Step away, back off pull back on your trading. Don't continue to drive forward with the idea that today will be different because we don't know that to be true. And I just hate seeing people lose that kind of money when we have this kind of uncertainty in the market. So let's keep in mind, guys, that we have a little bit of a challenge here in the market. We have officially made that lower low here in the chart, and we did dip through and make just a tiny little hint uh, or a lower high and a lower low um, on that little consolidation anyway. Now keep in mind if we push on through to the downside, we do have pretty substantial moves that could occur in the chart. So just keep that in mind. Now if we find some bullishness in the data today, if we find some reason to rally, then we'll want to watch this price resistance in here on the upside. Will we be able to push on through there and um, and then prove that we can hold up here for the first time? That'll be, that'll be something we'll want to watch pretty closely for as well if those bulls get inspired. Now let's take a look at the SPY. SPY SPY and looking at these levels in the chart, we have a little bit of a challenge here in the fact that we dropped into this gap um, here in the market. So take a look right through here. We, oh, the stupid thing changed colors on me. So we dropped into this gap and we have um, a little bit of resistance now showing, uh, showing up here in the chart right there. Now the question, um, we have to have answered is will the data today give us that bullish energy that pushes us back into that consolidation? That would be the safest place for us to be right now and just resting in that area. If we were to fail here, you could really see how technically damaging that could be in the chart. It would really shake investor confidence. So 
watch that closely. I don't know how the data is going to turn out today. I don't know if we'll see bullish or bearish activity in it. There is lots of uncertainty here this morning as we wait for these data points. So watch these areas closely. And then let's take a look at our QQQ. Now our QQQ, um, we did fail. We made a, a lower high here in the chart, as you can see. And we have pushed on through breaking into this gap. We came down at yesterday testing um, these lower levels of support in the chart and we did find some buyers but unfortunately we've created all these resistance levels above so now the question remains will we be able to find that bullish energy to push back up in here challenge these levels and break out or will we see that bearish activity kick in and that possibility that the qqq breaks to some new lows. Lower high, lower low would create some concern in the market. Now, if you remember yesterday, I mentioned the idea that we could easily test that 50-day moving average, and we did yesterday. We tested, not only that, pushed on through. So um, now that we know that that's possible, we have to watch these resistance levels and realize that if we can't get back through there, we could easily fail that 50-day moving average, and that could be a problem for us in the market. Again, if those bulls decide uh, there is some inspiration here and reason to get going, we have a pretty significant resistance level here in the chart that we're going to have to push through. So a lot of work, a lot of effort's gonna have to go into play to make that happen. So I still still think we have the question, and with retail sales this morning, we're gonna maybe find out, did Santa Claus show up this year, or is it the Grinch that stepped in, kind of steal some of the goodies here and um, create a little bit of bearishness in the market. We'll see this morning when those retail sales numbers come out. Then let's take a look at our IWM. Our Russell, by golly, just didn't get going yesterday. As a matter of fact, we pushed back down to test the lows of December, the early December, that sell-off. Um, and on December 1st and we're down here testing the lows and I wonder guys and I've mentioned this before if if that doesn't hold if we could if we might come down this time setting a lower low to test this um, support level in the chart. I can't rule that possibility out. And we have to keep in mind that the Russell is in official downtrend and not looking too healthy here at the moment. So if we were to break the support of that December 1st low and push down toward these lows, that could create a little bit of downside pressure in the market on its own. So watch carefully for that. And if you, you um, think that we might find some bullishness in here, well, just watch these resistance levels above. We've created significant res resistance levels above in this chart that's going to make it um, rather challenging for us to push right back through. So watch that closely. Let's take a quick look at the old VIX here. The VIX had a little bit of an increase yesterday. Nothing major, but we did rally back up and we actually picked up just a little bit into the close as those sellers came back on. Um, we have held this upside trend in the VIX and so far we are holding this price support. So notice this is right at the point where we could get that worrisome move in the market. If the data today brings out those bears, we could spike that fear here in the chart. However, if we find some good reason here in the market that um, we want to get bullish, we can ignore inflation and all those kind of things and see that opportunity for us to push back down and break down through that level. So it's really going to be data dependent today and unfortunately anything is possible. Um, so watch that carefully. Now we do have some resistance levels right in here as you can see. So if we were to push up into here and avoid getting super fearful here in the market, we could find some price resistance there and maybe just kind of hang around in a wedging pattern here on that VIX. Um, doesn't necessarily have to get out of control, but watch that closely. Then let's take a look at that T2122. Now T2122 Oops, dunk on it. T2122 um, is giving us maybe a little 
a flavor of hope that we will catch a bounce. Notice that yesterday with the selling that came in, we came very, very close into that bearish reversal zone here in the market. Keep in mind, we have a little bit of bearishness in the futures right now as we wait in anticipation of those retail sales numbers, some earnings reports and things like that. So we do still have that possibility, guys, that we could break down into this area right in here. We could push right on down into that bear, bullish reversal zone and then have that little bit over a little bit of an oversold condition, get those bulls inspired to push back. So watch carefully in there. Now we also cannot rule out that possibility if the bears get active here, if the bears have reason for activity here, that we could linger down in this area for a while as we did right over here. So watch for that possibility as well. Let's take a look at our T2108. Now I got to tell you guys, T2108 is not the warm and fuzzy that I, I know everyone wants to see. Yesterday, T2108 continued to fall. 23% of our companies are above the 40-day moving average. That means more than 75% of the companies in the market are below their 40-day moving average. And what's remarkable to me, if you remember, we set a new record high in the SPY right here. Very little participation in a lot of companies in helping us hold that up. If it weren't for those big techs, and you do have to wonder if big techs continues to sell well, that could be a little bit of a problem for the market. We could see those valuations coming in just a little bit. So watch that carefully if those tech companies continue to sell, creating more weight on the market. So not looking too good here on this internal metric. If we take a look at T2107, this metric doesn't look all that well. Um, also, if you see we have been in a protracted downtrend here with fewer and fewer stocks being able to hold above their 200 day moving average. Yesterday we did see a decline. Now the good news in here is that we have not made a new low yet. So that is good news here in the chart. We've had some of those stocks trying to come up out of those bottoms. Um, but let's also notice we have significant price resistance levels above that we're going to have to get through if we're going to start recovering these stocks out of these lows. 36% of our stocks um, is all we have holding us above our 200-day moving average. Let's take a look at our breadth, T2101. Now, market breadth typically goes up on bearish moves. Market breadth typically goes down on bullish moves. And one of the reasons that is, guys, is, is that old phrase. You know, when we go up, we kind of take the escalator up. We're slow, we're steady, we're breadth starts to diminish a little bit, those kind of things. It's just kind of grindy when we go up. When we get fearful and the market goes down, market breadth typically expands. And that's what we've seen here in this chart. And I've been warning about this for some time. If we break above this downtrend on that market breadth and we hold these levels of price support in here, if fear were to come into the market again, if we hold these levels, we could see that big sell-off occur if those data points support that and that fear continues to um, spike up here in the market. We know we're overdue for a correction, but we also know that we're in that holiday period where typically we get that bullish move in the market. So there's this big battle going on. Which side is going to win? I gotta tell you, I have no idea. And today is a complete and total coin flip in the market. Anything is possible. So talking about that, how about we jump over to that economic calendar and just take a quick look at what I'm talking about here. If you'll notice this morning, we have a retail sales figure out this morning. Now, a Econo Day consensus can be different than other, you know, companies out there giving a consensus, but Econo Day consensus is suggesting that our retail sales have come in lower than expected. Now, sometimes I have to say, Econo Day tends to estimate low and hope to um, be able to break those numbers um, 
to the upside. But one of the things that you want to watch here carefully is if our retail sales come in lower than expected, we have to remember that re our, our sales over the holiday period, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, were a little bit disappointing to a lot of the retailers. So it'll be interesting to see how this number comes in. If it comes in better than expected and they've shot that ens estimate low, that could certainly be a reason for bullishness in the market. However, if it were happen to miss that could be a problem here and we could see those bears engage so watch carefully on um, that retail sales number if it does shrink that could be just a little bit of a clue that maybe inflation does matter even though we're trying to pretend that it doesn't let's take a look we also have empire state manufacturing import export prices business inventories and housing market index all coming in this morning those have the potential to move us around a little bit but they're not nearly the major report of the retail sales then we have petroleum status here at 10 30 a.m eastern this morning once we get past that guys all eyes all focus will turn toward the fomc wondering about where they will set the taper how quickly we can start to expect interest rate increases um, right now the the conversation is we're going to see a taper of 30 million dollars of the 130 billion dollars of the 120 um, uh, billion that we're printing every month a taper of 30 billion and the possibility of ending that taper by March of next year and the possibility of interest rate increases after that point. So watch that carefully and then also keep in mind the Fed press conference right after can often create an awful lot of volatility. So once we get through this data this morning, we'll have some gyrations in the market, but then look for the market to probably get pretty stale and choppy as we wait for that FOMC. And unfortunately, we can't say we're past all the data this week. Look over here, housing, jobless claims, Philly Fed, industrial production, PMI flash, all of these tomorrow potentially market moving events. So we're not out of the woods yet. And then I want to draw your attention to this. We have a quadruple witching um, this uh, Friday, which means uh, by golly, all the way into Friday, we could have some really interesting price gy gyrations as all those options expire. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar for today. And we do have a little bit more going on in the earnings calendar today. We have 20 companies listed. A good number of those are unconfirmed reports, but we have more uh, in the notable um, range here today. So notable reports, take a look. Now these are not exactly the kind of um, stocks that I think are really going to move us substantially in the market, but we will want to pay attention to them. Um, ABM reporting today, it looks like they gapped up big initially and then are giving it up in the pre-market here pulling back, continuing to follow along this downtrend line. So watch that carefully here on um, ABM. We're also going to hear from BLDM, BLD, <laughs> BLBD, and um, we'll hear from that one today. Bluebird, it's been in an ugly sell-off here and not looking too healthy. So not exactly one of those that I think it's gonna be a major market mover, but something to pay attention to. Um, HEI also on that list. Um, again, not exactly a big market mover, uh, a, a name that's really gonna move us a bunch, but let's keep an eye on that. How about Lennar? Now, Lennar is one of those known names that definitely could move us around a little bit. So let's keep a close eye on that. Housing, kind of an interesting situation how housing has maintained itself to be really, really strong, even though there is some major concern about the pricing that we're pricing folks out of the market. Um, so watch that carefully here on Lennar. That might be an interesting report. Um, if you want to catch the full list of notables, guys, click the link just below the title of the the video that will take you back to the morning blog and you can grab that list of notables how about we take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that everyone if you could do me a favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video and if you find these videos to be worthy to be helpful 
if you could please click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment. You know, guys, I, I am so appreciative of everyone. I'm so humbled um, about the kind words and the kind comments on this. Um, I get responses quite often that these videos, that the education that I've put on YouTube is helping people with their trading, they're improving their profits. And I got to tell you, that's the thing that gets me up at you know, 4 30, 5 o'clock every morning to put these videos out. So thank you so much for everyone who supports the channel. And I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And also thank you to those folks that support the channel with the buy me a coffee link. If you're not a member of hit and run candlesticks or right way options, and you want to support this kind of content, that gives you an opportunity to do that. And that buy, buy me a coffee link is right below the title of the video. Let's take a look at some stock setting up and keep in mind guys we're going to have to be really really careful here um i i really want to suggest setting on your hands this morning in fact pop some popcorn put your feet up and just watch the show because it could be pretty volatile there could be a lot of tossing around and honestly that could continue through the rest of the weekend or through the rest of the week with all the data that we have coming our way so kind of keep that in mind and make sure you're doing your best job that you can to protect protect your capital. One of the things that we're supposed to do as traders is, is make sure that our capital is protected, not just be throwing risk blindly at the market when there's not a whole lot of edge. And I say that there's not a whole lot of edge because of the wild volatility that we have and the wild volatility that we could see in these reports today. Anything is possible. So having said that, let's take a look at a couple of charts. Um, CME, I've mentioned a couple of times before. Take a look at CME. We've been resting in this nice tight consolidation. And these are the kind of patterns that I look for. Um, we, we have periods of volatility. Notice we shot up strongly. Periods of price volatility where we whip around. And then we get this nice little resting pattern in here. Resting over toward the trend. A little bit of bullishness coming in on CME this morning. Keep a close eye on that. If that were to pop through, there may be some opportunities here in that chart for some upside potential. Keep an eye on CME. As you guys know, I've mentioned Ford several times, and unfortunately, Ford just couldn't, couldn't quite hold on. Um, it broke through this resistance. The, the uncertainty in the market right now pushes us back down into this range. So we still have to keep a close eye on it. Let's watch that closely. And remember, guys, one of the important things that I... I talk about over and over and over and I teach in the right way options group um, every single day is that when we are moving up in a trend and we break through a resistance level in the chart that resistance level cannot or that new support level cannot be trusted until price tests it and bounces off of it so right in here we had that breakout but doggone it we couldn't hold that price support so be careful chasing those big white candles particularly in this volatile market because those can be pretty darn dangerous here um, overall now one of the things that i found was really interesting yesterday is that with inflation just skyrocketing here we saw a move, a strong effort to bring um, financials back up yesterday. Don't quite know why that would be the case, but those financials tried to make a move. I still think we have that potential here. We're underneath our 50-day moving average, and notice our 50-day moving average will start to flatten out here very, very soon. We have that possibility of my favorite shorting pattern still setting up in here, and that's a blue ice failure pattern where we rally back to that 50 run into that it's like falling through the ice bobbing around bouncing back up trying to get back up through that ice and then we bump our head a couple times and we drown and we move back to that 200 day moving average now i know that's kind of a grim analogy but that's kind of a grim looking chart right there on those financials so be careful here financials perked up yesterday who knows i don't know why they would perk up on such a high inflation number but watch that closely there still is that opportunity that could move on lower here in the chart 
Let's take a look at um, how about um, LAC. I've talked about LAC a few times and doggone it, it just can't get going. And now we have this problem here in the chart. If you look closely, we kind of have this head and shoulders pattern that's formed here in the chart and we may actually lose that 50 day moving average. If we lose that 50 day moving average in this chart and we're breaking the neckline of this little area, well, now I have to start watching for that potential short and following that trend to the downside. So keep an eye on this, guys. There's going to be a lot more of those short patterns starting to show up in the market. Now, having said that, there are some stocks that have been extremely oversold that are um, selling uh, or are setting up some pretty interesting bottoming type patterns. Take a look at Visa. Visa. And notice we're still underneath our 50 day moving average, but the good news here in this chart is we broke uh, um, higher. Notice we could be setting up that inverted head and shoulders pattern in this chart. If we can hold this price support in here and maybe push on through that 50 day, there may be some upside potential coming in these charts. And if we take a look at PayPal, PayPal is one that I had suggested to folks in RWO, a bull put credit spread over here as we were bouncing off of this big support area in the chart. That bull put credit spread right now would be profitable, very profitable as a matter of fact, even though we are pulling back or have pulled back. But notice we have that possibility that we may have made our little higher low here in that chart and the possibility that PayPal could be start come start coming back here just a little bit so there may be stocks out there that are starting to bottom out and that hope that we may start moving some of these stocks back to the upside so keep a close eye on that and I'm running long here, but last but not least, guys, I want to continue to mention some of these defensive sector stocks. They are holding up very, very strong. We look for defensive sector stocks when the market is showing us uncertainty and potential weakness. And we've been seeing a surge in these defensive sector stocks. PepsiCo, Monster Beverage, Coca-Cola, um, Hershey, Clorox. Um, um, over and over and over, Constellation brands, lots of stocks starting to show some bullishness here in the market. And that's folks moving toward that defensive sector area. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading on this hump day. Y'all take care. Be safe. We'll see you right back here, bright and early Thursday morning.